When I was just getting started, I couldn't get my head around templating in Home Assistant at all. Today in this coding tutorial, I'm gonna teach you how to create any sensor that you want from any information that you've gotten in Home Assistant with some little YAML. But first, let's roll the intro. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Gio from Smart Home Makers, and this video is in a series of other Home Assistant coding tutorial videos. I'll link them at the end of the video, but let's just get straight into it. I got my wife a new tumble dryer as a present. No, I didn't. Don't do that, that's not a good idea. But I did get a new tumble dryer. And the reason I mention this on this channel is that I'm going to be integrating that tumble dryer into Home Assistant. No, I didn't spend a thousand dollars in an integrated tumble dryer with Wi-Fi but I did buy a Shelly 1PM and I'm gonna show you with that information how I'm gonna create a sense in Home Assistant. Jumped into Home Assistant, I'm gonna show you quick, quickly the entity that I integrated. You can see over here, I've got my Shelly 1PM. The one that we're actually interested in is this one under here, the tumble dryer switch power. So we have one for power and one for energy. You obviously do have a switch which allows you to turn it off on and off. So based on this sensor, we're gonna be creating a new sensor with the state of the tumble dryers. So I created a quick visual view in the energy consumption dashboard. So for my use case, zero watts will be off, 0.95 or anything under two watts, it's going to be standby mode. Anything higher than standby mode will be in fully operation, so drying. Jump into the developer tools, go to the states tab and search for the entity. Once you found the entity, look at the state my example, 0.0. .0. The unit of measurement is watts, so that's useful to know. Now let's go to the third tab, template. In here, you're gonna see a bunch of stuff, random stuff. Feel free to just highlight it all and delete it. The way this works, we'll be writing some code, some Jinja2 templating code, and the results of the um, templating code will appear on the right-hand side where you see results string and this is all empty. On the left hand side you see the template editor and in here we're going to be typing in our code. So with coding we always write pseudocode first. Pseudocode means the pretend code. We're just going to write out the logic that we're going to do. So if the tumble dry energy consumption is zero then the status is off. Else on. To actually write some templating, the first thing to do is to open these curly brackets and a nice percentage. You actually need only one curly bracket to open like this, and then another percent and a closed curly bracket at the end. The first part over here, we're gonna be writing if, so we need to actually define what are we actually uh, looking for. So in here, we're gonna look at the state and this is a function, so in functions we open brackets and we put things inside of the brackets, right? And the same with the single commas or double quotes, depending on what, what it is. In here we need a sensor that we're looking for. Let's wrap this around with double quotes. We close the bracket and we just go equal, equal, zero. And then right outside of here, we need to put in something. So we will put print some text, basically saying off. What do we need to do now is we need to create another line of code, basically another percent. And we're just gonna be going else and do that again. On last line will be our end if, and we'll close it down and we have a result. So if the tumble dryer energy consumption is zero, then the status is off, else, on. So this is the expression I have over here. The double equals is the comparative equal. So imagine this as a normal equal. So in programming languages, sometimes one equal means assignment and two equals mean compare the two. So are, is A and B the same? is double equal and basically saying that a is b or a is going to be b then that will be a single equal now you can spot something quite odd because actually it's giving us on when it should be giving us off now this is most likely because of the state of the device so if i go to the state it's still zero but it's zero dot zero 
So if I actually copy this precisely in, and I go back over here, and I also put some quotes around it, we can see off. I can also change this, and I can make this a little bit easier. I can add a pipe, and I can add a float, and I can actually change this. So what I'm saying over here, let me sort out the code first, and you can see now this is working with off. So this pipe is giving a data type. So in programming languages, we normally need to give a data type because the sensor tumble dryer is giving us 0.0. .0. We don't know if 0.0, .0 is interpreted as a string or if it's interpreted as a decimal or an integer or a float. In this example, we are talking about a float. Quick Google is for anyone doesn't know what a float is. Basically everything that's not an integer, so it's composed of decimal parts, is a float. We have our basic off and on situation. So now if I go to the state and I change the state, so I click over here and I put current state as five, and a set state. If I go to the template and I see it being on and if I go back, set it back to zero, we'll see it off. And now you can see that zero and 0, 0.0 should work interchangeably because I've set up as a float. 0, 0, 0, 0.0 will work. So I always recommend you convert them to float because if you keep it as a string and you put 0, 0, 0.0 and if it does go to zero in some sort of update, then that your automation will break or your sensor will break. So what else can we do, right? Can we do something a little bit more complex than this? Yes, we can. What I normally like to do is just doing copy and paste. So let's copy and paste it all again and let's try and write something out a little bit different. So what I want to say now in the pseudocode, so I am basically going to say if energy consumption is below two watts, then set state to standby. So we need to change this to an else if, so this will be off, this would be drying, so that's the status of the tumble dryer, and I need another state, so I'm gonna copy line 13 and line 14, space it out, yeah, do something like this, and now I'm gonna type in here a, an expression called elif. So elif basically is else if, but it's just shortened. And here I can repeat the same thing. So I can copy everything from the states because I'm using the same uh, thing to, to compare things. And what we will do is, is we're gonna set up here a number. So we just do less than two, actually less than equals to two. So if it's two or less, then the status will be uh, standby or whatever status you want. If it's not that, then it will be drying. So let's test this out first. So you can see it's off currently. Go to states, I want to set this to two. Let's set the state. You can see that it changed to standby. The previous one was, uh, oh, that changed too quickly. Let me change it again. Yes, yeah, so you can see on and standby. Now let's test drying. We us go to state, let's set it to five set state, go back to templating, and you can see on, but now it's giving me more detail, it's telling me that it's actually drying. This is a little bit of a lazy way of doing it with the else, you could actually be a bit more specific and you could say if the state is greater than two, then put it as drying, and then put an else, and then say unknown. You can make it as complex as you want, but remember with if statements, the first one that evaluates true and everything else will not matter. So if in the first one, so if you did this in a different way and you said that if the state of the tumble dryer is not zero, then that will be drying. If you did it that way, then you will never get standby, right? Because you'll need to write the code in a slightly different way. Experiment a little bit with this concept if you have anything that has energy consumption. And let me know if you actually grasp it Comment down in the section below. If you're getting value this video, remember to like the, the video, share it as much as you can on social media, that will be great. And subscribe to the channel for more of the same. Now let's jump into the actual
creation of the sites are based on this templating information. Jump into Visual Studio Code or File Editor, anything that you want to use to access your YAML configuration files. Go to your configuration.yaml. This is gonna be our starting point. Jump to the end of the file and start writing template. Remember the two spaces, you can see the two dots over here. And now let's start typing in dash sensor. So we wanna create a sensor and we're gonna keep on going space. The state of the sensor is what is going to be basically the tricky part. And because it's gonna be a multi-line expression, we need to use this greater than symbol to symbolize that we're gonna be writing multiple lines to represent the state. And now really what we need to do is, is get that templating that we built previously. So if I open it up in a different tab, get the template, copy it, and what we'll do is just paste it in here, double space it out, and ensure that everything is just spaced out properly. Cool, so what you should have after the formatting is that the percentage, the bra curly bracket percentages are all in line, as you can see here, and the actual statuses are two spaces indented on the right, and you can see all of the values are in line themselves. We need to obviously give this a name, which I haven't done so far. I actually need to move the whole thing and you can move all of everything together but if you highlight it and you just press tab, so that's also quite convenient. And the name is gonna be Tumble Dryer. That's it. So save this and you can see it sort of all indented it. Hopefully I have no error messages. This looks all good. Now let's check our configuration and restart Home Assistant. This has moved slightly the location where to do this. Click down here on settings. Go to server controls on top of here. Click on check configuration. You should have configuration valid. And let's just restart. Say okay. Now that it's back up and running, jump back to the developer tools, go to the states. We can obviously see that our tumble dryer is still there but we're looking for something else now. Search for tumble dryer or whatever you've called your own sensor. And we've got over here, tumble dryer. We have off as that's the status of it. If I click on the tumble dryer power and I put this to two and click set state, we should go by and we should see it go to standby. Let's put it to 10, let's set state and we should see it go into drying. Set up the dashboard, now let me jump into the garage and take you with my mobile phone and try it out. So currently Home Assistant says it's off. We've got zero watts. I've put it to a quick setting, just around 12 minutes for shirts. Let's press the start button. Just kicked off. Straight over here, yep. You can see it drying, energy consumption updated immediately, and it's all working. If you want to learn how to integrate any device with Home Assistant with APIs, then click this video over here. This is Geofront Smart Makers. See you in the next one. Ciao.